Hello and welcome back to this video series and today we're going to be covering a more basics of P5.js. This is the third video of the series getting started with P5.js. So if you're enjoying the series please give me a thumbs up and if you don't well don't. <laughs> and um, okay so we're going to continue. As I said before we're discovering different shapes we can do a um, in p5.js okay and i recommend you to go to their website if you want to discover new shapes you can do um so the the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, play with those shapes using the draw function so again if we break down our if we make a rectangle so we say 50 50 100 100 so it's going to be a square because the width and the height is the same we have a rectangle okay if we want to change the color what do we do well, there's a function here that is called fill, and it's going to take a few parameters. So, uh, well, it's only going to take one, which is going to be the color. As I said, the, the colors are grayscale, and 255 is completely white, and zero is black. So, I wanted to make it, um, let's say, 200, which is not completely white. Then we just have to call the function before the, the actual uh, uh, shape. And as you can see now, it's kind of gray, it's not completely white. If we were to make a rectangle here, um, and we say it's going to be in position 100, 100, and it's going to be another square of the same shape, same uh, same shape, then we have two ones, okay? Problem is, they both are the same color. And how is that? Well, that's because we call the function um, fill before this one, but because we don't call it before the next one, then um, that's going to assume it's uh, two, uh, 200, so it's going to be kind of great. So if we wanted to change it, all we have to do is call the function fill with the different color we want to call and put it before. So now we have one gray one, which is the first rectangle we called, and one white one, which is the second rectangle we called, okay? Um, there's a few other functions, okay? So you were to change the background to 255, um, so it's easier to see. As you can see, they have a stroke. A stroke is basically like a like a border. And if we want to get rid of them, there's um, a few things we can do. First of all, we can call it, it the, the fill and the stroke and all of those functions I'm going to tell you now about don't have to be in, the, in a specific order. They just have to be called before a shape. So if we want to, for example, to get rid of the stroke, all we have to say is call the function no stroke. So now none of them are going to have a stroke. Okay, so now you can see that, and this thing here is basically the other square, okay, which is white, so that's why we can't really see it. If we wanted to see the other stroke, all we have to call is a stroke, and I think you need a parameter, it does need a parameter, and the stroke basically needs, you know, a parameter, so we may, if we were to call it 2, it's going to be 2 of stroke, and that one is not going to have anything. If we were to call it, um, let's say 100. It's going to be a different color if we were to call it a 255. Then we have a problem, don't we? The stroke is a color of um, the border of it. Okay, so if we were to call it 200, you see it's like a grayish one, it's barely noticeable. Um, okay, so that's um, that's some other functions. We can also change the the like the weight of the stroke. So let's just call it stroke zero, which is and then also we want to call stroke weight. That's a function again. Okay? This function is gonna take how big do you want this? How big do you want the border? So we can make it 10 and you'll see it right. I change it to black. That's gonna be a big, big, big thick one, okay? The bigger, you know, the, the bigger the number, the thicker, the smaller, you know, the thinner. So um those are a few functions, and again they have to be called before the rectangle. So if we were to change stroke zero after fill 255, it'll still do the exact same job. Okay, so you need to know that, but they have to be called before the function, okay? Before the shape. Sorry about that. Okay, so what are the things we can do, okay? As I said before, this is a draw function, okay? So I'm going to introduce you to moving objects. So if we were to call a rectangle, and I call rectangle, I say it 100, 100, 100, and 100, okay? Just to make it easier for ourselves. We have a rectangle, okay? I'm going to make the background color um. 51 because it's more appealing to me. Okay, so we have a rectangle. How do we want to move? Okay, now how about we say we want to move with our mouse, okay? Well, there's two functions for that. Uh, there's a function that's updated all the time, which is called mouse x, 
and mouse Y. As you can see, the color has changed, so you know it has to be right. And that's a uh, mouse X stores the X position of the mouse of the cursor, and the mouse Y stores the it's a variable that stores the Y location of that of the mouse. So now, if we were to move it, as you can see, look at that. That's moving, okay. So that's moving, but we have a problem. That's moving, but it's leaving a few things afterwards, isn't it? And why is that? Well, as I said before, um, this is a draw function, okay? So the set of function is gonna call a, it's gonna create a canvas of five hundred by five hundred, and it's gonna put a background. But after that, that's all it's doing. Then the draw function is create a rectangle every sixty times a second, and well, depends if it's lagging or not, and depends on your browser. But it's more normally sixty times a second, and it's putting a rectangle wherever my mouse is, okay, in the location X and Y of my mouse. So if I run it again, this is what's happening, okay, it's updating it all the time, six times a second. So how can we just move the rectangle by itself? Well, that's a really good question. All we can do is, instead of calling the background here, all we have to do is call the background here. So what's happening right now is that we, did, because this is happening six times a second, it's saying, okay, I'm gonna create the background, and then I'm gonna create a rectangle with this location. So now, and then it's gonna go back up again. It's gonna go back up again, and it's gonna create the background again. So it's all gonna be 51 with no rectangle, and then it's gonna curl the rectangle again. So as you can see now, now we have a rectangle, and I know you don't, you can't really notice right now because you know it's, it's really, really fast, but we're creating a lot of rectangles, and the background is updating itself all the time. So what happens if we were to call this function here? After re the rectangle, okay. Well, we'll see. We can't really see a rectangle, are we? Because we're creating first a rectangle and then we're changing the background, okay? So we're getting rid of what we're seeing. So now we have it back, okay? And this also works with uh, lips, you know, circles, uh, other shapes, okay? Of course. Uh, so uh, I think that was a long enough video, and thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please, uh, you know, share with your friends and thumbs up if you do. And if you don't like it, well. Just tell me in the comments what I can do to improve myself and thank you for watching again and see you in the next video.